local paper picked up the fact that there were women running from other boroughs and that little tiny house had something like 56 mothers and children, you know, with yeah. the sleep, the women sleeping with, up against the walls with their heads on their knees and the children all sleeping on mattresses on the floor. Mm. Uh, and and we were coping, we were managing only just, but we were bulging. And also the Hounslow had taken out warrants for my arrest because I had no right to overcrowd or even to offer anywhere to sleep for mothers and kids. So it, it did make the local newspaper, whereupon mm. hell broke out. The local vicar preached against me and said I was a marriage wrecker in the church. And the local MP said I was doing it for publicity. But And I was condemned all round. And what happened was that I was fined. Uh, a, a man called Vincent, he came to see us. And we didn't know who he was. He just walked in one day and he said, what do you all need? And we said, we need a really big house. So he said, go and buy it. And we just looked at him. And because he, he was the head of Bovis, the great big building firm. So, right. yeah. And so he bought us the house literally within weeks and put the money in to, to, to do it up. We moved in. We were overcrowded before we moved in and we kept the little house. And suddenly we were on our way. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, I, and I was safe for those three years because at this point I knew that the feminist movement, which was very, very, it was very, it was fashionable at the time to call yourself a feminist, but it was a Trojan horse because the feminists, we were all equity feminists wanting mm -hmm. equality, including many men. But mm -hmm. what I didn't realize behind it was gender ideology. And it was the gender ideology that actually has destroyed the entire movement of understanding that domestic violence, the roots of domestic violence have always been an intergenerational family violence and dysfunction. Coming down from one generation to another, look at mine, I've got three generations, me, my generation, our job was to transcend it. Mm. That's what I felt for the mothers coming in. And almost immediately, the first hundred mothers, I realized there were two different situations. There were women coming in who were innocent victims of their partner's violence. But they had already had good family backgrounds and mothering and fathering. So once mm -hmm. and, 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 and rehoused, they were able to make their own way. But the women that close to my heart were like my mother. They had come from generations of violence and dysfunction. Mm -hmm. They weren't capable of mothering. They were violent, and so were their children. And they were the ones that I believed that, that we needed a therapeutic community in order to create an intervention to help mothers and kids relearn strategies. And mm -hmm. as a child, you learn strategies for your survival in your family setting. If the family is violent, then you learn. Now, my sister's reaction to the violence was to actually what I call hibernate. So she'd get migraines and asthmas and she'd got uh, awful, you know, uh, eczemas and all those kind of, uh, you know, imploding feelings. Mm. Whereas I was e explosive and very, very violent. I wrote mm. a book called Infernal Child. I was a dangerous child. And that was my strategy for fighting. And it's mm. the one I had to really relearn how not to go straight from frustration to rage which is what violent people do.